You know what else everybody like? Parfait. Have you ever met a person you say, hey, let's get some parfait? They say, hell no, I don't like no parfait. Parfaits are delicious. No! When we talk about regression, there's a lot going on. And so you need to understand that there's different ways of viewing what's happening. Let's begin with the most simple, basic way you're probably thinking of, which is just plotting the data. Here's an example I've always wanted to try. If I measure your blood pressure right before a test, would it relate to your test score? I'm making some sort of a guess of the regression line would be negative here. In other words, as your blood pressure goes up, that's because your test score is dropping. Something about being worried or scared about the exam. I would love to see this study actually done. Here is the regression line, meaning it's the predicted value. You tell me what the blood pressure is, and I would expect that your value would be right where the red line is. But no one lands on the red line. There's a little bit of error. We call that error the residual. I can look at this person. Their residual was very positive, right? They've got a higher score than we predicted. Down here, this person, their residual is very negative. They got a lot lower score than what we predicted. And everybody here has these different errors for what they got. So we could make a different graph of those residuals. And right in the middle would be the regression line, which would be an error of zero. And then every dot on here I can put on this graph. This first dot is kind of low, the next dot is kind of above, and if I was a really good artist, I can make sure all these dots match up exactly where they're supposed to be. I'm not really that good of an artist. I'll bet if you look, you'll see inconsistencies. But I wish I could just take this window, which would be this tilted box, and straighten it out, and that's what I would see. And hopefully what I see in this plot is going to be just random scatter, because the data is randomly scattered around the regression line. And we're going to use these plots to see whether our assumptions about how the data is spread around the regression line are true, and we're going to use these to be able to check our models. So these are two different plots that are very similar. I put blood pressure, which is the x value, on both of these, but you could also put test score, which is the y value, or other various things as the x, and you're still looking for are they randomly scattered around the regression line. There is a third plot which is really important to talk about. It's based on the true value of the slope. We call it beta 1. Remember the equation? y equals beta naught plus beta 1x. So there exists this true slope. And the null hypothesis says that slope should be zero. But when you gather data, sometimes you get a slope that isn't zero, it's just a little bit negative or just a little bit positive. How much positive or negative is reasonable? For that, we call it the standard error. This standard error is a measure of how much wiggle room that slope could have based off how much variability there is in the data. So if the slope really is zero, your data might show a slope that's a little bit negative or a little bit positive. In this example here, this is really steeply negative. My guess is you would be way out here. So when we calculate probabilities, we're saying, how far away is it from that null hypothesis? A big p-value means you're in close to the null, and so the null is reasonable. A small p-value, you're way out here in the tails. We don't believe that null. This is important because this is the kind of picture you should have seen in the intro class where you do a hypothesis test, and this helps you feel comfortable about where that p-value comes from and how you interpret it. But when we talk regression, we could look at pictures of the actual data, we could look at pictures of the error of the data around the regression line, and we can look at the sampling distribution for the slope, which is where we get our p-value. Keeping those three pictures separate is tricky, but it's important to understand them because we'll be looking at all of them in their own turn.